Hello and welcome to our 13th video in our seasonal sampler series. Today you'll learn about the Dresden plate pattern. Actually, you'll review two versions of this pattern while making these flowers. Ready to begin? You can find the supply list below with a link to this free Dresden plate handout and to the other tutorials in this series. The Dresden plate was a very popular pattern in the U.S. in the 1920s and 30s. It's circular in shape and was named after the fancy pattern dishes made in Dresden, Germany. There are many different variations of this pattern. You can change the number of wedges in your circle, which in turn will change the angles of each one of these wedges. You can also change the outside edges of your pattern. The lengths of the wedges and the sizes of the inner circles can also vary. In this video, you'll make Dresden flowers with 12 wedges made from 30 degree angles. By now, you might have figured out how this angle size varies. A circle has 360 degrees. Figure out how many wedges you want and then divide 360 by this number to get the angle of each wedge. So in our project, the angle will be 30 degrees. First you'll work on these pointed petals, then you'll learn how to add a curve to the petals. Before I forget, you can purchase Dresden rulers. This one happens to be for a 16 wedge Dresden plate. If I divide 360 by 16, I'll see that the angle on this is 22 and a half degrees. Make a template of this wedge, either by gluing cardboard to the back and cutting it out, or you can use template plastic for this. I traced around this template on the wrong side of the fabric. You can cut out each one of these individually or layer your fabric and use your rotary cutter, cutting out multiples. I cut six wedges from this fabric and then I'll cut six more from this fabric but you might want them all the same, or you can experiment with different combinations. Fold the wedge in half with right sides together, and then pin. Sew a quarter inch seam along this edge. Back stitch by the fold to lock your stitches. Trim this corner, and then finger press this seam open. Turn it inside out, might want to use your scissors to help pop that point out. Line up that seam with the center of your wedge and then press. After you press, you want to make sure that both of these sides are equal. I like to hold it up to another one just to double check those sides. Lay out your block. Put right sides together and stitch a quarter inch seam, making sure to back stitch by the fold. Pick up the next petal, put right sides together, and stitch, and continue in this manner until all the petals have been stitched together. Or, as you can see, I like to work in pairs, and then sew these sections together until all the petals have been completed. When all your petals have been sewn together, you want to press. Press the seams all the way around in the same direction. Don't worry that there's a hole in the center you'll be covering that up with a circle. As I said in the previous video, there are many methods available for appliquing circles. I like to use freezer paper to help stabilize my shape. On one side there's plain paper and on the other it's shiny. I trace the circle on the plain paper side. Now before I did this, I tried out different size shapes to see which size I liked best. I decided I liked a circle two inches big, but any size will do. After I cut out the circle, I placed the shiny side down on the back of my fabric and I pressed with a hot dry iron. As you can see, you don't have to buy new fabric for your circle. You can use scraps. This is the sleeve from an old shirt that I'm using. So you want to eyeball about a quarter inch seam around the outside edge and cut out your circle. I hand basted the seam allowance to the back, but you can use a washable glue stick if you prefer. Center your circle and pin in place. 
I use matching thread to applique my circle. Then I remove the basting stitches. You turn it over and reach in. Loosen up that paper. You can just pull it right out. Now this flower is ready to be appliqued in place. To make these rounded petals, I'll also be using freezer paper. For this method, you do not need to trace the seam allowance. You can do that by just placing the paper over the handout or I prefer to cut out this shape and then move it around on my paper to trace it. Now another thing you can do is instead of tracing 12 of them, you can fold your paper. I'm just going to fold it once and put a couple staples in the pattern to make sure everything holds in place. And then you can cut out a couple at the same time and you won't worry that the paper moves around when you're cutting. When you're finished cutting, just remove the staples. I press the petals with the shiny side down on the back of my fabric, making sure to leave at least a quarter inch seam allowance all the way around each petal. Take your rotary ruler and line up the quarter inch line on the edge of your petal and cut. Cut a quarter inch over for these three sides. On this rounded edge, eyeball about a quarter of an inch seam and cut around the edge. Now you'll want to turn those curved edges to the back of the paper. In the last video I showed you a couple of ways to do this. You can use needle and thread for basting or a washable glue stick. If you're a beginner at applique, you might find a washable glue stick easier to handle. So I'm going to start where the dots are and I'll put glue on the paper and on the fabric. I'll work a little section at a time, let's say about half of it. Use your thumb to gently push that around to the back and start working your way around. Pick up your glue. You spread it evenly. Take your thumb and turn that edge over. Maybe try both of these methods to see which one you like best. Lay out your block. Put right sides together and stitch along the paper's edge. Don't worry if the paper comes up. You can just go back to the iron and press it. Make sure to back stitch to lock your stitches here. Continue in this manner until all the petals have been stitched together. Press the seams in the same direction all the way around. Decide on the center, this one's three inches, and pin in place. Before sewing, remove the paper from the area where you'll be stitching. These flowers are now ready to be stitched to the background. In the next video in the Seasonal Sampler series, you'll learn yet another way of appliquing when you add your leaves and flowers to the background fabric. Hope you stay tuned. If you're still looking for more challenging applique projects, try our star within a circle. You'll find the links below. So happy you visited LearnHowToQuilt.com. To subscribe to our YouTube channel, click on the Ohio Star in the lower right hand corner. And please share our free patterns and videos with your friends. Thanks.